another crime. Right. What, what do you make of what Donald Trump is saying here, Catherine? Well, first of all, most defendants do not testify, and I anticipate that Donald Trump will not testify. And if he does, it'll be a gift to the prosecution. What I'm also looking to see tomorrow in addition to jury selection in New York in state court, there's something called a Sandoval hearing. Right. So the prosecutors have to tell the other side, they already have, uh, what prior vicious and moral criminal bad acts they intend to cross-examine their client about. And then the judge will decide that. Because determining on how much the judge says the prosecutor asks, the, the defendant, Donald Trump, that may determine whether or not he will be testifying. So it's that's what I'm also going to be looking for. That's typically done in normal cases in New York before jury selection. And we haven't heard anything about we're going to start on tomorrow with the Sandoval hearing. But I don't anticipate that Donald Trump will testify. He will not be allowed to do what he did in the civil case um, when uh, basically Judge and, and Gorman first was upset and then just let him go on. Why? Because there was no jury. There's a jury here. The judge, this judge, is a very strict, good judge. Is not going to allow a defendant, any defendant, to pontificate. You're going to have to answer the questions. Let, let's, by the way, um, remind folks, he was on the stand for about 90 seconds with all that anticipation of Woody or Woody. He was on the stand for 90 seconds. I want to play also some sound of someone who could also be a key witness um, as well, Michael Cohen. Let's listen to that. He is not a good witness. He's not going to take the stand. In fact, I hope that I'm wrong because I think that would be absolutely classic for America to be able to see Donald Trump on the witness stand trying to defend himself in a case that's indefensible. But he obviously is agreeing with Catherine Christian there, um, essentially saying it, it would be a gift to Catherine, as you put it, um, to the court if, in fact, he were to offer up testimony to the former president. Charles, though, weigh in for me on Michael Cohen as a witness, right? The real question will be the credibility of Michael Cohen. But I hearken back to Judge Ingrone's, um judgment from the Trump civil fraud trial in which he said, verbate, Michael Cohen to him was a credible witness, right? But this time it's going to have to be in front of a jury. Yeah, I think that that's something that, as a prosecutor, you just become accustomed to dealing with. You're never going to get a nun with a clear past who saw everything with their with their eyes in broad daylight up close. Those, those things just don't happen. Your witnesses are usually going to come with some degree of challenge. And, and you know, if you're a prosecutor, if you're out of Bragg's office, you're going to make the case that who better to know what was going on with respect to Donald Trump than someone who was actually in cahoots with them. And then conversely, if you're Donald Trump's team, you're going to say, look, Michael Cohen is someone who has an axe to grind, who only had this epiphany of truth, morality, and supposed justice after he got convicted and had to go to jail for lying. Now, the thing that makes this a little bit different is that this is a case that involves a lot of documents, Yasmin, in terms of pointing the direction to where the money went and how it moved hands. And that's going to be able to corroborate Michael Cohen's testimony in a way that will help slide off some of the doubt of credibility that will be placed on him by the defense. So ultimately, I think he's not necessarily the ideal witness, but there's no ideal witness. And that's a new thing that the public needs to understand. And because there are so many documents in this case that will speak for themselves, it doesn't hurt as bad as it would perhaps if this were another type of case that the jury was hearing. Charles Coleman Jr., Catherine Christian, thank you to you both. We're going to be seeing a lot of you over the next couple of weeks, that is for sure. Uh, by the way, you can catch everybody's special coverage of Donald Trump's hush money trial starting tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, with Ana Cabrera and Jose diaz Bolart. And coverage will continue throughout the afternoon with Andrew Mitchell, Chris Jensen, Katie Turr as well. That's tomorrow starting 10 a.m. Eastern right here, where else, on MSNBC. Coming up next, more on the breaking news out of the Middle East as Israel vows that it will respond to the attacks from Iran while President Biden urges Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu not to escalate the situation. We're going to discuss what could happen next. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? The draft includes Slash and Jimmy Page. He became an honorary. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six string solos on the Series XM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. Series XM Guitar Greats on Channel 107 and year-round on the Series XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are. Attention drivers, experts.
is launching a new over-the-road operation designed exclusively for team drivers. You'll run dedicated routes between XPO facilities and brand new sleeper trucks with in-house no-touch freight. A typical work week is five days on the road followed by two days of well-deserved home time. XPO team drivers receive full health benefits on day one, paid holidays, PTO, 401k, and more. Connect with a recruiter to learn more at xpo.com slash teams. That's xpo.com slash teams. Go according to plan, especially during winter. For some, that might mean accidentally burning the pumpkin pie, the one they were going to top with whipped cream, drizzle with rich caramel, and bring to the neighbor's holiday party. Fortunately, they can always bake a new pie. But what do you do if your gelled or iced up diesel engine won't start or gain power during cold winter temperatures? You can't just bake a new engine. You use Power Service Diesel 911. That's what you do. This winter rescue formula restores the flow of fuel to diesels with gelled fuel or frozen fuel filters. That's why it's called Diesel 911. So this winter, plan for when things don't go as planned. If freezing temperatures stop your diesel engine cold, start going again with the original and best diesel fuel winter emergency product, Power Service Diesel 911. It's as easy as pie. Learn more at powerservice.com. Myrtle Beach is the golf capital of the world, and now, giving that proud title a deeper meaning. With the PGA Tour on board, we now represent the height and heart of competition at every level. For buddies trips, Myrtle Beach Golf creates priceless memories by the thousands each year, and in Myrtle Beach, kids play free, bringing new generations to the game like never before. Myrtle Beach is golf in every way. Visit PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com and learn how you can be a part of it. Hey, have you ever used Cheapo Air? Yeah, for years, and I really like it. With Cheapo Air, you can book online, use their app, or even over the phone. They've got great prices on over 500 airlines and millions of accommodations. They are my go-to for travel planning. Oh, and if you join their Club Miles program, you can earn points to save on the cost of your travel. Book on the app, and you get double points. Mm, sounds like it's time to try Cheapo Air. Call Cheapo Air at 855-292-7493 or visit CheapoAir.com slash serious. Attention, real estate investors. Did you know New Silver offers instant online approval for fix and flip, construction, and rental loans? Get approved in under five minutes, close within five business days, and enjoy some of the market's lowest rates. If you're flipping, building, or own residential rental property, go to newsilver.com slash XM and click the apply online button now to get instantly approved and secure a $1,000 closing credit for a limited time. That's newsilver.com slash XM. Terms and conditions apply. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navage Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navage helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navage gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navage is available online at navage.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navage and a-V-A-G-E. Eric was way behind on his taxes. I owe a lot of money to the IRS. Almost $15,000. Eric called Optima Tax Relief. When Optima Tax got involved, the calls would stop. The threats would stop. It was easy like the uh, one, two, three. Optima Tax Relief took care of Eric's problem. And now my debt is clean. I don't owe anything. Call Optima Tax Relief for a free consultation. Call 800-725-9935. 800-725-9935. All right, we're back with the latest from the Middle East tonight. Israel vowing to respond to Iran's unprecedented attack as other nations urge restraint this evening during an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. The UN Secretary General condemning Iran's strikes on Israel while calling for both countries to, quote, step back from the brink. President Biden and other G7 leaders also met earlier today and said they're working to avoid further escalation in the region. According to a senior U.S. official, Biden has told Israel he will not back any counteroffensive against Iran. Israel's war cabinet deliberating for several hours earlier today, and the IDF saying operational plans have been approved. However, NBC is reporting uh, Israel has not reached a final decision on retaliation against Iran. I want to bring in now NBC News senior executive editor David Rowe to talk more about this. So all the reporting indicating that we don't know when, we don't necessarily know how, uh, we don't know to what degree, but Israel, in fact, will retaliate, will respond. What do you see, David, as the objective um, in this response and the ultimate goal here? That's a, an excellent question, and, and really, what is going through the mind of, of Prime Minister Netanyahu? I, I think this could rain 
range from um, the, the sort of smallest response could be a cyber attack, um, which the U.S. is carrying out as well against Israel, which would be very limited. The most aggressive attack uh, would be a, a massive uh, Israeli airstrike designed to take out the facilities uh, in Iran where Iran has been developing the components uh, needed, the, the enriched uranium needed for uh, a nuclear bomb. Um, that would be very aggressive. That would be, you know, it'd be a very large operation involving many aircraft, but we don't know. I mean, uh, the United States clearly hopes it's something on the smaller end of this. Um, and in the end, it's very much a, a domestic, I think, is really political question. Um, you have a divide already emerging in the war cabinet about how aggressive the response should be. And it'll be fascinating to see in the days ahead, you know, what you see in terms of polls and other expressions of opinion from the Israeli public. So, so you talk about how the response and, and where and the response would be, how the response would come. And I think, for instance, about Natanz, which is in, in a more rural area of Iran, it's a, a, a site where in which um, they develop nuclear energy.